friends, thanks for coming back. I want to apologize before we start this video. Uh, this was actually recorded a few days ago on the 31st. I know it's a few days late, um, but I had a big mistake that I made. It's gonna cost me some money. Um, happened right as after I filmed and I was trying to download my videos and all that. And so I've been trying to deal with that for the past few days. That's why this video is so late. So thank you for bearing with me and I hope you enjoy. Hi Flosstube, welcome back. Uh, my name is Carmen, your Broadway Stitcher. Back again for Floss number two. We'll be back in two and two ladies and gentlemen, remember that uh, game show. <laughs> I watched it as a very young person, but I did watch it on TV. <laughs> uh, so welcome back. Thank you so much to everyone who watched my video liked my video and commented. I appreciate every single one of them. Um, you know, I, when, I was watch, when I watch FossTube and I see people say, oh, thank you for the comments, I always thought, you know, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really makes a difference. I am amazed. So I will be responding to all your comments for sure. Um, and I'm going to be commenting on a lot more people's FossTubes because I love you guys' stuff and I'm gonna let you know about it now. <laughs> So get ready for that avalanche of commenting. Um, today is July 31st, 2018. As many of you celebrate, happy birthday, Mr. Harry Potter. You turned 38 today. Apparently he was born in 1980, if that's right. And Jessie Marie, this is a shout out for you. We'll talk about a little bit about it later, but I hope this uh, counts for my bonus, yay. Um, okay, so lots of stuff to cover today. Uh, let's get started. Uh, today's beverage is an alcoholic beverage, an adult beverage, per if you, if you uh, would like to say, because today was a gorgeous day in New York City. Oh, this past week uh, we had those annoying rainstorms, humidity in 95 plus humidity, 88 degrees, 90 degrees. Oh, it was just miserable, miserable. Today was gorgeous. The sun was out, it was cloudy. Um, it was, there was a breeze outside. So you know what, it calls for a little Riesling. Um, this is Zoom, Z-U-M. Lovely little thin bottle. And what I really like about it is I can drink the whole bottle and not feel horrible the next day. So if you wanna feel good, Riesling, try some Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. All I wanna do is Zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. Remember that? Uh, yeah, that was high school days, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, the we are drinking from a pineapple, and I drank the Kool-Aid, I will admit. Um, this is from SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical. Yep, it's a thing, folks, it's a thing, and it's fantastic, um, and you need to go see it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's going to close very soon. It's playing at the Palace Theater in New York City. Uh, which you will see in our location today because it is from, guess, Times Square, New York City, on a beautiful night, tons of people, you'll get to see it all, and you'll come along with me. So get ready for that, and I'll tell you why I was there so late um, that day, and I wasn't watching, well, no, I take that back, I was watching a show, I lied, of course. Of course I'm watching a show. If I'm on Times Square, come on, and the end, the day ends with why, you know me, I'm watching a show. All right, so, ah, some reinforcements. Okay, um, in one of the clips I'm gonna insert real soon, uh, we're gonna talk about a very short video uh, of, the, of my sash. Um, I've seen a lot of beautiful craft rooms that you all have set up. I have space in my apartment. Um, the space here and behind me is my craft room, stitching room, warehouse, whatever you wanna call it. This is all of my cross stitch supplies, equipment and whatnot. Um, I have a lot more quilting just because fabric takes up a lot of space and I have a lot of fabric. Um, but you know, my three sterilites that I have are right nice, make a nice little armrest right here um, and these are the floss boxes that I use a couple of dollars three four dollars Joann's Michael's Hobby Lobby they all have them um, and I bobbinate all my DMC floss here you can see oh 
gorgeous. The new 35, 36 new colors, they're all here, all bobbinated. There's some variated, variegated, and do I have 111 in here? Yep, I do, I have an extra 111. <laughs> and I just ordered a box of 12. So I'm gonna have plenty of 111. This is the, the floss I'm using on that long dog sampler. Um, I bobbinate very cleanly, very orderly, if you, if you will. I love it, it's a very zen activity for me. I just sit there and just whine slowly and just let my mind wander because you really don't have to think about what you're doing. You just look at it and you just whine and whine. And it also makes a great subway riding activity. Because let me tell you, I tried to stitch on the subway. Whole lot of nope on that one, like Stitchery uh, likes to say, right, Danielle? Uh, yeah, whole lot of, whole lot of nope on that one. Um, the train just vibrates way too much and it stops and it starts and you go boom, boom like this and you're doing, doing like that. Um, and it just doesn't work. Your needle just wants to go up everywhere and it's a mess. Um, so I gave up on that early, but I abominate. I'm caught up, thank goodness. Um, so until the next uh, Joanne's or Michael's DMC floss sale, I am all set. This is my beads. I think I have beads and buttons box. And um, I don't really have a stash of beads. Um, I get what I need when I need it. And then, cause you know, you get a thousand or whatever it is in each one of them. So I have leftovers. Um, I have buttons in here. I have charms from a lot of the shepherd's bush, like the monthlies each have a little charm. So I have those in here. Um, at some point I picked up a whole mess of multicolored beads. Um, which is nice because if I need a little black one for a fisheye like I did for my by the ocean I just grab it and go and actually I am using these little blue ones Those are going to be the bubbles in that needle book, which I'm going to show you later um, So yeah, so they come in handy uh, Nice little box. Everything's contained in here. Some of the beads have started to spill, but it's okay. They're very well contained um, So those are the beads and then the sterilite. I have three of those the kind of squarish ones and those have all my patterns uh, some of my kits um, and yeah the majority of my kits um, so you know it's it's not very much physical space but as you know patterns don't take a lot of space right it could just be one cardboard cardstock sheet or just a couple of pages um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that um, you don't necessarily see. Uh, I am in the process of organizing and mapping everything that I have because what I find is that if I'm working on a project I like to kit things up and put them in a bag and have everything together ready to go for that project but I have like three or four skeins of the same color which DMC is fine right 50 cents or less per skein no big deal uh, but then when you talk about fancy floss, you're getting $2 plus um, each skein, and now I have a whole bunch of them. So what I was thinking of doing, um, I am going to map, and I'm actually creating a little database. I am a database developer, business analyst, um, data person. I love numbers, I love data, I could crunch data all day long. Um, so it's near and dear to me, I love it. I know there's the Xstitch app, but uh, from what I've seen, there's no laptop, desktop-based uh, version of that, and really that's what I want it for. Um, so I can put a lot of data around it, what floss, what pattern, when I started, the status of it, etc., etc., etc. I do have a little um, stitching keeper, uh, stitching diary on Excel. So simple little Excel, I'll show you that in some future video. Um, which I love, but I wanted something a little bit more organized, more detailed, um, because I have bought the same pattern twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means I really like the pattern because I ended up buying it twice and I forgot that I bought it the first time. But you know, it, I'd rather spend it on something new rather than something I already have. Um, so anyways, where I was going with this is, I wanted to know what I was thinking of doing is this is taking one of these types of boxes and putting all the floss in it from all my projects. And this I can just, 
you know, carry around, just move, move from room to room, or if I'm going on vacation or going away for a few days, grab what I need and just dump it there. But then I can keep everything centralized. Um, do you guys do that? Is, does it work for you? Or is it just, you know what, too much of a pain, just keep the extra skeins of floss because eventually you're gonna use it anyways, right? At some point, you can go stash shopping or whatever. So let me know what, what you do. Or if you do something different, what do you do as well? How do you organize um, your stitching supplies? Uh, and then, let's see if I can reach behind me here. Oh, no, it's all on the floor. Uh, what I wanted to show you is my DNC floss is so nicely bobbinated. My fancy floss is not. <laughs> I can put it on as two earrings and a hot couture, maybe. Um, I don't quite, I don't want to bobbinate these. Um, especially, which one is it? There's a few, what is it? So like um, sampler threads, you know, the ghast, the gentle arts and stuff, they're already cut into strands. So that would be a lot of winding and whatnot. But I don't know, I've bobbinated a few of these colors and I just don't like it. Um, I have to write a lot on the, the little tab of the bobbin and it, it just ends up being really tiny letters and just doesn't work. So for now, the rings work great. Um, I alphabetized by name of the color. Um, all of the different designers are in there. I don't care. Um, I prefer just to do it by color. Um, if I were to do it by, I'm sorry, by name of color. If I were to do it by actual color, it would be a mess. No, 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 no. Um, this is way easy and for now I have two and this just goes in a box and there you go. So that's pretty, pretty good. And that's my, that's how I deal with my stash. Say hello to my little stash. Yep. This, believe it or not, is the entirety of my cross stitch supply patterns, kits, threads, floss, etc. supplies. Except for finished pieces, which I have hanging or um, put away because they're Christmas or Halloween or some other event. This is it. Can you believe it? and welcome to Times Square in the heart of New York City yes bright lights everywhere as you can imagine tons and tons of people today is Thursday July 26 it's a gorgeous night uh, you're looking at the famous red stairs on the north part of Times Square and as we pan around you can see there's a ton Play That Goes Wrong is a hilarious show. You should all go watch it before it ends in August. And as you can see, it is really nice. No rain today, which is fantastic. Uh, so everyone is out and about. And there in the distance, let's see if I can zoom in. If you can see a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. You can see 2018. That is the famous New York uh, New Year's Day ball. That's where it comes down and millions of people crowd this area uh, something I will never do you have to get here like at 2 p.m. and you're in a corral all day so yeah there's no way I'm gonna do that but as you can see super super lots of lights McDonald's of course and one of my favorite shows Yay! right there Spongebob Squarepants I know I know you're all thinking what but it is a fantastic show. It's amazing. I've seen it more than one time, more than one time. So here I am on the north side, on the top part, looking south, and you can see the amount of people is just ridiculous, as you can expect here in Times Square on a beautiful night. <laughs> One of the staples of Times Square here is the acrobatic guys. Uh, it's pretty cool, you, they draw a big crowd, but they just really take a long time to do stuff. So you feel like you're standing a long time for not much of an outcome, but it's fun. You should definitely do that if you come here. And while we wait, let's look one more time. There's the ball way up there, 2018, sweet. Uh, fun fact for you, uh, do you know how Times Square got its name? Uh, this area actually used to be called Long Acre Square. And as you can see, it is not square, it's actually X. 
It's an intersection between Broadway and 7th Avenue. But what happened is um, it was really not in a good state way back when. And so the building where the ball drops is actually a little triangle building, kind of like a flat iron building. And the New York Times said to the city or the municipality, hey, we'll come in and we'll move into that building and help renovate, you know, regenerate re the area if you rename the area Times Square in honor of the New York Times newspaper. So that's how Long Acre Square became Times Square, the area that everybody loves to come visit. And so you can see how awesome it is at night. Um, I really recommend if you do come, wait till it's nighttime to come to Times Square for the first time. It's just really fun experience, really cool, tons of people, lights, all the shows, Harry Potter, Come From Away, the Disney Store. Behind me is the Lion King, so you can't see that. Just a lot of fun, but come at night. It's just a really fun thrill to see for the first time. And when someone talks about going to a Broadway show with a capital B, there's actually an area called that contains the 41 Broadway theaters. And it's cool, if you come to Times Square here, and you look on the floor and you see there's some writing on the floor. Those are actually all the Broadway houses, starting from Studio 54, which is on 54th Street, coming down the August Wilson, which is on 52nd. So is the Neil Simon. Neil Simon is where Katz was. Um, and then the Gershwin, so on and so forth. And you keep looking and there's all 41 Broadway houses. This week's whips uh, are all part of Jessie Marie. Jessie Marie does stuff. Um, her challenge, she and her floss tube just turned five. Woo, blinking lights, blinking lights, Jessie hands. Um, so congratulations, Jessie Marie. Your videos are fantastic. And it's fun to just binge watch and see a ton of your, your stuff. Uh, so her challenge to us was a uh, mini sow. It was, it's a five day sow. And it is Jesse Marie does stuff and a bonus. So J M D S and then whatever you want to stitch. Um, so let's get started with what I picked and where I'm at. Um, so for July, it is the July section of my long dog sampler, the mystery sampler, which you guys have been seeing a lot on Instagram. I know I'm sorry, but uh, it's just it. It's just really pretty. It's just a lot of work. It's really dense, 40 count, one over two on 40 count navy. So lots of hard things there. It's a challenge, but it's beautiful and I love it. And all of this, yeah, all of that first top half should be filled in. <laughs> Not quite so much. I started late, uh, I was waiting for fabric and then it came later and then um, I got a slow start and it's just a lot of work, but I have a plan. Um, in the next, in the next, in the future months, what I'm going to do, I think is every other day I will plan on stitching this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pattern that we get for the month and divide it, sub cut it out into 15 ish squares. Um, that way it's a little more manageable and I can say, okay, today I'm just doing this little section, this little section, this little section. Um, plus a little bit of whatever I've missed from the previous months. And I think that's going to work out. Okay, day two is M. So that is Miss Martha Washington. And again, please uh, don't mind all this waving of the fabric. That's my fan. It's still way too hot um, in the city and in my apartment to not use at least air conditioner or fan. And this is actually my second time filming this because I forgot the first time that the air conditioner was on and it's literally right there. Uh, because of the way the windows are in my apartment, I can't put a window air conditioner. So I have one of those huge thing, portable ones with the hose sticking out the window. Um, it works enough. Um, I lived in Arizona for 12 years, so I really got used to fans. Um, and anybody that lives in Arizona, um, McKenna, you know, you probably know this too. 
Uh, we cool things down to a bearable amount. We do not keep things cold because in 128 degrees in July, uh uh, it's not gonna work. Mm -mm. Even if you have a ranch style house, even if you're in an apartment, oh my God, God forbid you're on the top floor of an apartment building, uh, yeah, it's, it's rough. Uh, so really, we use a lot of fans and I got used to that. Whenever I can open the windows here, my windows have bars, so no security issues there. Um, whenever I can open the windows, I do because I just love all that fresh air. I hate the cigarette smell that comes in, both from cigarettes and from weed and who knows what else these people are smoking out here. Um, that every so often comes in through the window, but you know, it is, I can't do that. I can't block everybody. I wish I could, because uh, it's just so, it's nasty. It smells, it stinks, it's just bad for you health-wise. Um, but anyways, whatever. Um, it would be really nice uh, if I didn't have that, but I would rather have the windows open and have to deal with that than not have them open because I just love that fresh uh, breeze coming in and out. Let's get back to stitching. <laughs> I digress. Okay, Martha. And that is uh, Classic Colorworks Cherry Cobbler. I am loving the variegation on this. I'm loving the coloring of it. The pattern called for Old Brick. And it was just too, too, um, it was too pinky. It looked faded, that's the word I'm looking for. Really faded and I wanted something a little more stunning because I also, because the bejeweled, which is this, it's actually more blue than you can see here. I know it's very aqua-y. It's very aqua and bright. And I didn't want that really faded pink in it. So I made the decision to change the colors because it's my project, I can stitch what I want. Okay, next is D. So Jessie Marie Does Stuff, which is her channel, and I'll link that below. Um, D, I really don't have a D project, um, but I do have a death project. Um, this is Heinzet's Last Stitch Cemetery. And if you haven't seen this pattern, it is so appropriate for us stitchers. Look at this. Let's see if I can, I'm not going to get a good, oh, there we go. That's better. Um, there's little tombstones. This is the last stitch cemetery and the tombstones say started and forgotten. Yep. Uh, half stitched. Yep. Check. Too old. Check. I've also got the, what was I thinking kind of thing? And then lost interest. Yep. Yep. So it's really gorgeous. And the reason I'm doing it is, and I don't have it here. I've had this frame forever and ever. Um, it's a perfect brown wooden frame with a little stand that I've had forever and ever. I've been trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do for it. So I figured, I figured it out and if I do this on 28 1 over 1, which is when I'm doing it, and I found some even weave in my stash, so that's what it's going to be used. But this is, I think this is this side up. Meh. Anyways, I think it's this side up. This is one of the tombstones, and it is this tombstone right here. Um, so this is an even weave that I found in my stash. It's kind of, uh, but it works, and it'll go perfectly. I just got to stitch one over one on 28 count. Yeah, fun times. Okay, uh, S. Jessie Marie does stuff. So this is day four. And that's going to be tomorrow, which is also August 1st, which is Ingleside Imaginarium Gardens from Notre Dame Day. Um, I love this pattern. I love this. I showed it to you last time. Um, and tomorrow we get the next. So actually at midnight, so in an hour and a half because it's 1030 right now. Whoops. I'm a night owl. Hi, night owl stitcher. I'm with you. I'd rather stay up late than wake up early. Um, but anyways. Tomorrow we get to the next section, which is the August, I'm trying to see which way, this way. The August portion and August is gonna go right here, right down here. And it is a shell pink, so S, that's my S. It's going to be the same color as this one here. And that was Sybil. So all my ladies are gonna be, the pink ladies are gonna be S's. I have the perfect name, I'm so excited. Um, and of course, it goes with a Broadway show. <laughs> um, so I'll be showing this done, and also I'll talk about that show 
next week. So stay tuned. Or if you want to see it on Instagram, I post every day. Um, and then day five is a bonus project, stitch whatever we want on. Um, so I'm going to stitch on what I'm calling now the project that I love from hell because <laughs> apparently I can't follow instructions. Um, this is the By the Ocean from Romy's Creation that I showed you last week. Um, and you see this beautiful variegated red, yellow, and orange border? It shouldn't be there. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. Only the inside of the needle book is supposed to have a border. Um, but that's okay. I said, you know what? I really like it. I love it. I'm going to leave it. Um, and I'll figure out how the rest of the stuff works. So I move the fish around. Ooh, yay. yay. Holy crud. Okay. Go look on Instagram. You can see better pictures of this. Um, and so I got the fish. I moved the fish up and towards the center. And now they look like they're kissing. <laughs> so we have two kissy fish. Uh, these are the blue fish. On this side is going to be redfish. So this is going to be the front. Um, and this is going to say needle and pins. No, needles. I was able to get needles and apostrophe N instead of in or and pins. And then some bubbles, which um, that's what I mentioned, the little blue beads I'm going to use for that and make some bubbles. So give them a little bling. Their eyeballs are also black beads. So that's it. So this is the outside of the needle book. It's gonna be a needle book, and then this is gonna be the back. It's gonna have a red fish here and here, and it's gonna have my initials and the year. The inside is actually done, yay! So it's half, half a finish. Definitely not an FFO, but a finish. Um, it's the, this is stitched properly. <laughs> so the inside is supposed to have the border um, in red. This is the call for but the outside was just too boring. Um, I put, used some pinking shears on this felt. Uh, tip, if you need to cut felt with something that has shapes like this or scallops or something like that, put a piece of tape um, or a sticker underneath the felt. And that helps the scissors to cut through better. Otherwise, it just chews up the felt like you would not believe. Um, I also used little uh, tiny scissors just to trim up the angles um, and so that helped and then I just glued it on and that's the inside so I can put some needles in there yay okay so that is Jessie Marie does stuff with the bonus with the fifth day printing and today is a bonus if you were able to incorporate Harry Potter into it I hope this is okay with you Jessie um, because yeah, it's Harry Potter. Because today is Harry Potter Day, uh, obviously the most appropriate show to talk about is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, parts one and two. People, oh my gosh, if you are a Harry Potter fan, you gotta figure out how to go see this show. Uh, it started in London on the West End. It won all sorts of awards, all sorts of Olivier awards, and that's Olivier with an R at the end, but it's pronounced Olivier. Uh, that's England's version of the Tony Awards, which many shows have won, including Groundhog Day. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, that was from last week. Um, but anyways, the show is in two parts. So it's, it's, almost seven no oh yeah almost six hours worth of show and omg but here's the thing they've got a hashtag keep the secrets so i can't tell you anything about the show except that it's amazing because keep the secrets you want you need to go see this show without knowing nothing about what you're going to see because it is it's mind-boggling the other thing I will say, if you are a really big fan, don't read the playbill before act before part two. Wah, wah, wah. There's also an insert, don't read it. And they've actually even put in, 
And I'm gonna fold this just so that nobody sees anything they shouldn't see. But look at that. Look how cool these people are that they're telling you, hey, don't read this. If you read it, it's your own fault for being disappointed. Um, but if you're not a very big Harry Potter fan, it's fantastic because they have a great synopsis that tells you, you know, the main things that you need to know in order to better understand what you're going to see. Um, holy crap. I don't usually cuss, and you're not gonna hear me cuss very much, but crap I will use every so often. Damn. Okay, that's two. <laughs> but those are very low, come on. They're low level, bad words. Um, this show is playing at the Lyric Theater in on Broadway. Um, the, sh the theater is between 42nd Street. It takes up the block between 42nd and 43rd Street, um, just west of Broadway slash 7th Avenue. Oh my goodness. So they remodeled the theater just for this show. Okay, and I'm gonna move over a little bit because I'm gonna insert some pictures here. The carpet has H symbols on it. The coat check room is a Patronus room. Oh my Lord. The lamps have um, like a Phoenix style bird on it. The, um, the, the signage outside matches the signage inside. Uh, the merchandise tables are amazing. Um, they, they have uh, customized cups and I have one, I can't find it. Yeah, in my tiny little apartment, I can't find that cup. Um, I know I have it because I spent whatever it was to buy the cup because I said, I need a cup. I need a Harry Potter cup. Um, some shows are worth it. Some shows, I'll be honest with you. When you have to spend $20 on a drink, which is maybe this much, just to get the cup, that's a lot of money. Um, and people do it, and you know what? They leave their cups after the show. They leave them on the floor. Um, and I'm thinking, dude, you just spent $20. You, why don't you just at least take it home, wash it, drink it one more time before you throw it out? Um, so that's how I've gotten second and thirds of some of these cups. Um, listen, take it home, put it in boiling water with soap, with some bleach, it's perfect. Um, I, there's some, not a lot of shows I'm gonna spend that amount of money uh, for soda, really, I'm not that big of a drinker, so I'm, I usually just get soda. And that's a lot of money, people. Um, but some shows I have three or four. <laughs> um, but anyways, this one, I did not purchase a drink. This was left by somebody, and I reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Okay. So what makes Harry Potter amazing? Um is the whole production is wow um the re the re design of the lyric was made specifically for this show and it shows um it's gorgeous it's ornate um it is this huge space it's this the mezzanine and the balcony are really pushed back um so there's this i want i don't want to say cavernous but cavernous space um, if you're sitting up in the mez. And I'm a front row mez person. Um, I think that gives you the best angle to see things from. Um, and definitely, if I'm going to a show for the first time, it's front front section mez. Because, come on, front row mez is expensive. Um, and then, if I go back again, maybe I'll watch it in the orchestra. Um, but the problem I have is I'm, I'm short, and I always end up getting a person that's tall in front of me always happens people it's so annoying and you know i'm not gonna get a booster seat to boost myself because then then i'm gonna be a tall head in behind me but um but anyways so front row mez is my seat center of course right um but there are shows where i know where i want to sit for certain reasons and i'll explain that when i talk about dear van hansen in a future episode but anyways <coughs> back to back to harry uh, the details that they have put into this show, holy smokes. Um, yeah. 
one thing I will say, this show is very expensive. Very expensive, yes. Um, worth every penny, but it's expensive because you're seeing two different shows with two acts each. So there's four acts. Um, they have two variations. You can see it either on two different nights. So you see part one on a Thursday and part two on a Friday, or you see everything in one day. <laughs> so at 2 p.m. you show up for part one. Uh, let's out about, before, just before five o'clock, you have a dinner break, and then at 7.30 you're back again. Um, I had, uh, yeah, I had no problems going to see it. It was a, it was a marathon Sunday. I did both shows in one day. Um, my friend, who also loves to go to theater, she did it over two nights, and she really liked that she was able to absorb what happened in act, in part one, sleep on it, and come back the next day for more. Um, I'm the opposite. The closing of act one, part two, because you gotta think about this. The closing of the first part was one of the best cliffhangers you'll ever see. You're like, what? the heck are you kidding me and then you think two and a half hours before i can come back and see this <laughs> um you need it trust me um try to chill just relax don't go do all stuff go grab some dinner um if you're in a hotel nearby just sit and watch there um, and then come back and be amazed the worst thing is you're gonna want to talk to somebody about it <laughs> no one else has seen it because <laughs> tickets are so freaking expensive um uh, I'll give you a tip if you can wait to the last minute you might get really good seats for a really good price but you just never know um, if you're in a big group you can't do that if it's one or two people in your group um, try to wait as long as possible I've seen some good deals out there hint hint uh, so that's Harry Potter playing at the Lyric uh, in New York City uh, it's not going anywhere soon folks so you have time, oops, let me put this. And look how cool, they put the wings, the wings match, part one and part two. Part two, part one, yay. Okay, let's get back to stitching now. Okay, I may need to stop drinking something because this is take two for this next section. <laughs> I did not hit record. Man, that sucks. Err, okay, let's try again. So you're gonna get the short version of this. All right, so this is the project that I love, 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 love. I stitched it for Christmas 2001. Uh, I've moved to Arizona in January, early January of 2002. Um, and so Christmas 2001, my mom and I went nuts. Um, we went to Bed Bath & Beyond. We went to what was then Burdines. Remember, for all you Florida folks, Burdines, remember that? It doesn't exist anymore. Huge shopping store. Uh, it's Macy's. Now it's been, it was bought out by Macy's. Um, Burdines to buy my bed. Bed Bath & Beyond to buy dishes, silverware, pants to cook in. I mean, I had nothing because I lived with my parents, so I had nothing. I needed from the bought them up so we had a lot of fun that Christmas uh, like we shopped all the sales and we did after Christmas and all that junk um, because my job gave me relocation so I was able to take everything so we put everything in the garage whatever we would buy they came and boxed everything up it was the best I felt like a queen they came and just boxed came to my room boxed everything up came to the garage boxed everything up took it away and they came to pick up my car and they took it. Oh, it was fantastic, fantastic. Um, so anyway, so I was stitching this for Christmas and when I started, I, I don't know if I knew that I was leaving yet because it's a big project, so I probably start early. Um, but uh, my mom saw it and she loved it and she said, you know, could we have it? And I said, hell yeah, of course, you're my mom and my dad. Of course I'm gonna give this to you if you want it. So Merry Christmas and here it is. It is ah, the heart of Christmas is love. Oh, isn't that beautiful? 
I'm gonna get terrible lighting here. But look, all those little cherry bits, blossoms. Oh, hollies, I think, right? Holly berries. All those are individual mill hill beads. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of beads. Um, then there's a lot of krennic. This yellowy stuff is krennic. There's some krennic here, there's some krennic here. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm inserting a uh, video right after this to show you in more detail so you can appreciate it. Um, that design, okay, so let me just finish talking about it. Um, I did not know how to sew at that time, so my mom finished this for me. I tacked on the, the trimming, that's pretty easy. But she finished it, it's got a little slip here for the pillow form. Um, and then we trimmed it up. It looks exactly like the book Because <laughs> that's the way I was back then it was it said if it said green 337 I was stitching it with green 337 uh, But the book it came in is one of the better homes and gardens and I meant to do this and I didn't to um, put my finger in the page it is the 2000 version of the book you know these are the ones that come out every year um and i just ordered one from 90, 1994 2004, 2014. uh someone else has put it on their um floss tube and said it was still available at horschner's it was four dollars plus tax and shipping and all that junk of course it comes with a buddy because no pattern should travel alone um so that's coming but anyways this one is Better Homes and Gardens, a Christmas, uh, Cross Stitch Christmas, Timeless Treasures, 2000. This book is never gonna leave me. Well, I'm sure eventually when I die, it'll pass on. But it's not, it's not being de-stashed or <laughs> pass on the stash, none. Here's why. Are you ready for this? All right, you see that? It's upside down. <laughs> I love it. For whatever reason, the inside of the book. Oh, and look how cute. Hmm. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> um, the inside of the book is flipped from the cover. <laughs> All right. Here is how they finished it. Look at that. Pillow, blue trimming. Yeah, I did it exactly how I called for. Um, and how awesome is it that the book <laughs> is incorrectly printed? Maybe this will become a collector's item. Uh, a rare item? Get more on Etsy? Um, on eBay? <laughs> no. But anyways, so this is my favorite, favorite project. And um, let's go now to the detail video so you can see more. Oh, I already had so much fun stitching this. But just take a look at those berries. All of those are beads. Every single little bunch was a bead. Ah. Yeah, as you can imagine, those took forever. And then, let's see if we can get a good coloring. Now oh, you can see a spark a little bit. Right there, that beige yellow, that's all chronic. Yep, chronic, chronic, chronic. You know, it's not bad because that's pretty mindless stitching, right? It's just a pattern. You follow it all the way across. And then some Krynik blended with some red thread. And then more Krynik here. Kind of that Krynik gold. Yeah. Oh, I loved, love, 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 love this one. And I, I know exactly when I stitched it, 2001. There's my initials. <laughs> Continuing with the finishes, which I thought I had taped and I didn't. <laughs> um, let's talk some more finishes. Uh, this was a Stitch Mania start. Yay! It's a little scissor fob. Oh, I made it into a scissor fob. Let it snow with a little snowflake. Uh, uh, ah, diggle dangle. Um, hindsight, uh, you can see it on my Instagram. Yay, I finished it with some trimming, very easy to do trimming, made into a scissor fob. Um, apparently, I need to get 10 million scissors because I like to make scissor fobs. Yay. Um, next up, this was from 2016. I'm 99% sure or 2015, but I'll get it to you. I finished it as a little 
hanging for, um, I have it on a doorknob in a cabinet. Um, this is Satsuma Streets, um, oh, I forget what it's called. Something bird, some bird, some autumn bird. Definitely put the link here. It's a free design um, and hopefully it's still free. Uh, it's hopefully, she makes fantastic designs, as you all know. Uh, Pretty Little New York from last week was one of her designs. So this is another one that's fun. I did it as a flat fold or a flat finish. Here you can see, just backed it with some brown fabric. Um, used pearl cotton to make this trim. Tied it at the top, tied it at the bottom, so I don't have to hide anything. And it works. Next is a little miniature. Seasons Greetings. Um, don't remember the designer. I'll put it in the, the comments. She, I assume it's a she. I know that's terrible, but most designers are female. Um, they, I'll use them. They have a whole series of these little minis that fit into these frames. And I got another one at Stitchville when I was in Minnesota. Uh, but this is Season's Greeting. I stitched this a long time ago. This was 2016. So maybe this was 2015, the Satsuma Street. Uh, not sure. Um, besides uh, cross stitch, I also quilt. Um, I learned to quilt in Arizona. Uh, when I moved there in 2002, I had no idea how to use a machine. Barely used it because my mom was, is such a fantastic sewer that I never learned. I, she did everything for us, you know, all the hems and whatnot, um, she did. Uh, so it wasn't until I left home that I said, hey, what can I do? Uh, so I took a class. Yeah, you know me, I take classes, right? Uh, and so I took, I looked in the community college just to see what they have. Let me tell you, Maricopa County, which is where Phoenix, Scottsdale, Peoria, Chandler, um, all those cities are, um, has an amazing community college because you can go spelunking, which is caving. Uh, hopefully not to get lost like the little boys, but caving. Um, you can go, you can learn how to scuba dive. You can... Um, you can ride the rapids of the Grand Canyon, which I did on a three-day tour. You can backpack the Grand Canyon, which I did. Um, what else did I do? I learned how to sew. So I took a quilting class, a semester of quilting. And you get college credit for this, people. So I could get an AA in, I don't know, general studies or something, just from the fact that I took all of these electives that they have. Um, and they actually, the reason they have so many outdoor classes is because they have a um, outdoor recreation, kind of like a park ranger, land management type of curriculum. So these are a lot of the classes they did. I did an outdoor survival class for the weekend. Um, it was fantastic. Oh, it was a load of fun. Anyways, coming back. Um, so I did a semester of quilting. And every week we had a technique, um, hand piecing one week curve piecing another, uh, paper piecing one week. Um, one week we had to finish a pillow. And then at the end of the semester, we had all these 12 inch squares, which was the, the size of all the homeworks. And we put it together into a quilt. Um, and I passed the class very well. It was a lot of fun. I learned a ton. I love quilting. I have my stash is humongous. This is nothing compared to my quilting stash. Um, and I love it. I look at that quilt now and I think to myself, what was I thinking with the border? And on a future video, I'll show it so you can see, but oh my gosh. You know what? It's my first quilt. I loved it. Oh, it's, you know, your first project of whatever technique you're learning is always kind of has a special place in your heart. But anyways, um, kind of like you people who have kids, uh, you know, those drawings from kindergarten, first grade, my mom, my mom put them into a binder for us, so she had them bound into a book. Um, all those little drawings from kindergarten and pre-K, ah, oh, so cute. Maybe I'll show it to you uh, next time. Anyways, sewing. So um, I picked this up at um, one of those stitching uh, quilt, quilt con kind of things, um, one of those fairs, and it's this. Look how cute that is. Oh, and look at the fabrics. It is um, tape measures and Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. One of my favorite fruits. <laughs> uh, these are 
just regular pins. These are those flathead pins or things. And then this just sits on the edge of the table. This dangles over it, drop threads, orts, scraps, garbage, blah, blah, blah. And the cool thing about this is you flip this and it just goes like that and you carry it on to your class. So yeah. All right, so those are some of the finishes I have. Let's move on. Welcome back. How was your intermission? Did you go get a $18 glass of wine or soda or water for your kids, for yourself? Did you get into the super long ladies line? You know what, intermission, sometimes we need that break. Um, but now that we're talking theater, let's talk about the second show for today's episode. Um, as you saw, we were in Times Square a little while back and I may have shown you the marquee for one of my favorite shows because it's right on Broadway um, at the Palace Theater in New York City. Uh, gorgeous theater is really big. Um, it's going to be renovated. So the show that's in there now <sighs> closes on my birthday weekend. Can you believe it? And I'm not going to be here. One of my favorite shows. I am going to be as far away as I could be in a United States state as I can be. I'm going to be in Hawaii um, having a lot of fun, eating a lot of pineapple because pineapples are the symbol of hospitality. So that's why you see them a lot in uh, hotels. Fun fact. Um, but I will not be able to watch this show on its closing day. I was so bummed. Um, of course, I will go on the last day I'm here in New York City, which is the 12th. So September 12th, I will be there, of course. Um, but anyways, SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants. I know, I know. Hold on. You're all thinking, Carmen, have you lost your marbles? Uh, that is the show that my kids, probably my boys, grew up on. I hated it. It's so annoying. It's so dumb. And I thought the exact same thing. And I haven't even watched an episode of that thing. Um, just watching it in commercials or announcements or whatever was more than enough for me. And then I won the lottery for this show. And I drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I drank the pineapple flavored Kool-Aid. It is an amazing, amazing show. Where do I begin? Um, it is a col the, one of the most colorful shows you've ever been to. Um, <coughs> they, they have it's kind of a blue purplish lighting. So we're all, your, all the pictures people take from, um, from the theater with the playbills before the show, after the show, uh, you're gonna see a purple haze. Um, it is just so cute. Oh, um, the writers, everyone, Tina Landau directed it. She is a goddess. Right now she is directing Dave in Washington DC, which I need to go see. Um, it's gonna transfer to Broadway, so no worries. Uh, it stars Drew Gellig, who was the original Dr. Pometer in Waitress. So all you Waitress fans, he's coming back to, to Broadway. Yay, and he sings, yay. Um, but anyways, SpongeBob, oh my gosh amazing and I can tell you about this show there's no keep the secrets here uh, the cast um, Ethan Slater plays Spongebob he is new to Broadway he's done some off-Broadway stuff and whatnot holy his warm-up routine needs to be just so crazy because this guy literally bends backwards uh, for this show <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, he is just goodness personified um, just so, the, and he, in real life, he's the nicest person. I've stage doored this, and you saw a stage door in the video. Um, there, all these actors are just the nicest people. You know, unless you go crazy, and I've heard stories of crazy fans, and wow, people. There is definitely a line. You know what? As much as I love these actors, and I follow them on Instagram, I am not their friends, and they are not my friends. And I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It just means... I am a fan, they're an actor. There is a separation here. I don't consider myself friends. I don't consider myself, hey, I can just stop you and go have lunch with you if I see you on the street. I will go googly eyes over you. Um, 
but no some people oh my gosh yeah no 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 um, but I love the stage door it's just so nice um, it's fun as a fan of the show just to see the actors you know they were just on stage and they're right in front of you and they sign your playbill and this is not I have fully signed um, playbills but those are put away um, but anyways um, Spongebob I've seen it six times so September 12th would be lucky number seven my final viewing of this show um, anyways Ethan Slater was robbed of a Tony Award Tony Shalhoub should not have gotten that Tony Award I will not get into it but Ethan Slater should have gotten that award he got everything else except that one but anyways um, Ethan Slater uh, Lily Cooper who plays Sandy the squirrel is crazy um, Gavin Lee oh my god he plays Squidward go watch I'll, I'm gonna find some videos and I'll link them down below he dances he tap dances with four legs people four legs because he's a he's a squid squid octopus he's a squid um, tentacle spectacle people oh my gosh so he's got a full set of legs behind him oh amazing just amazing um, Danny Skinner he plays uh, Patrick Starr oh, so cute oh my god for if any of you are fans is Mayo an instrument um, I think it should be uh, he's fantastic and then Brian and I always forget if it's his middle name or his last name so let me look at the cast list let me cheat a little bit here Brian Ray Norris um, I saw him in an off-Broadway play called a dog story and I love that it was so cute um, so that's one of the other nice things is um, if you're here long enough you're gonna see actors in different shows which is so fun but then you can say oh I saw you in blah 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 and you were fantastic and blah 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 um, the entire rest of the cast is just fantastic so here oh my god Wesley Taylor plankton oh oh wah, wah, wah. okay you gotta watch the show I know I look crazy watch the show it's hilarious um, so here are the main six Ethan Slater Gavin Lee Lily Cooper uh, Brian Norris Danny Skinner Wesley Taylor the ensemble is fantastic uh, so what they did for the music is they actually had every song was written by a different person or a different group um, so you've got all kinds of songs uh, my favorite song is I'm not a loser which is sung by Squidward if you watch the Tony Awards that's the one he sang um, in that he actually did his number and I'll, I'll link that below um, it was written by um, they might be Giants and I totally knew that it was them before I even looked it up because it's a totally They Might Be Giants song. Um, Constantinople, if you guys know that song, you know They Might Be Giants. The music is fantastic, the acting, um, it's so colorful, it's so fun. Kids will love it, adults will love it. If you're a fan of the show, you'll love it. Even if you're not a fan of the show, you're gonna love it. So go watch it. Drink the Kool-Aid, it's delicious. Um, and then you can get some merchandise. <laughs> So I got the bag. I also got the pin somewhere around here. Um, but SpongeBob SquarePants, yay! Or as they say during the show, how do they say it? Rhombus slacks. <laughs> SquarePants, rhombus slacks. Wah, wah, wah. Anyways, all right. Let's get back to other stuff. <laughs>